PCR has nothing to do with antibodies. I mean, this is basic stuff. Stuff you can learn as an undergraduate in college or just through 10 seconds of Googling. How many hours of research did she say she's done again? 40,000 hours, four zero, 40,000 hours worth of research. Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. And this week, I'm going to be debunking Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Sherry Tenpenny is a longtime anti-vaxxer, but recently she's gone viral for her interviews dealing with COVID and the COVID vaccine. So in my slog through all of these COVID deniers and anti-vaxxers, I figured it's time for me to tackle Sherry Tenpenny. And since her viral COVID interview is getting removed from places like YouTube, I decided to cover an interview she did a while ago, also about COVID, that's still on YouTube. And this interview is a really special one. I'm a physician, I can read the medical literature, for which I've been looking at problems associated with vaccines for 20 years, and I've logged at least 40,000 hours, 4 zero, 40,000 hours worth of research. Let's remember her saying that she's done 40,000 hours of research. Well, there's a couple parts to that, Spiro. When it very first started happening, like, so I'm going to say this was around maybe the second week in March, uh, you know, when they really, because uh, they, when this really started building up and all the hype and everything, I mean, I, I pulled up and went to the CDC website and I started researching coronaviruses. And I said, well, what's the big deal about this? So basically she thinks that coronaviruses are not a big deal because there are a lot of them and some of them cause things like the common cold. Well, I wonder whether in her 40,000 hours of research, she managed to learn something about the coronaviruses that do kill you. SARS was one back in 2003, where although it couldn't spread very efficiently through people, it still killed a lot of the people that it infected. It was definitely something to worry about. There's also MERS, which is another coronavirus that doesn't spread very efficiently through people, but has killed a lot of the people that it has been able to infect. Not every coronavirus is equal, just like not every influenza virus is equal. Some years the flu virus is pretty mild, some years it kills a lot of people. And there are some strains of flu virus like H5N1 that kills up to 60% of the people that it infects. Luckily, that virus isn't very good at spreading through humans, at least not yet. So right away, I find it hard to believe that she's actually researched this topic because this is really basic stuff when it comes to virology. And uh, what are they actually testing for? Are, are these PCR tests testing for COVID-19 specifically? That is the $64,000 question, isn't it? It's probably the, the $1.2 trillion. It's, it's the $3 trillion question, actually. What the heck are they testing for? Well, PCR is a very basic molecular technique. PCR works by detecting specific pieces of DNA or RNA. I said earlier that not every coronavirus is equal. There are things in each coronavirus genome that separates it from other coronaviruses. A PCR test can hone in on what is different between specific coronaviruses and identify just one of them. That's what the COVID PCR test does. It targets very specific sequences of the viral genome, which in this case is RNA. And these parts of the genome are specific enough to SARS-CoV-2 that it doesn't detect other coronaviruses, but these parts of SARS-CoV-2 also don't change very much. So we're able to still detect the virus even if it's mutating. So in summary, this PCR test is targeting conserved but unique sequences of the viral genome in order to detect it and not other viruses. Now, having done 40,000 hours of research, I would expect Sherry Tenpenny to know about this basic molecular technique and how it works. But when the interviewer asks her what PCR is testing for, she continues to say this. If there are 36 known coronaviruses that have been around for six decades, for 60 years these viruses have been known and been typed, and it's an RNA virus, so each time it goes through somebody and they, somebody gets sick, it morphs into a new subtype. Uh, what are they testing for? Are they testing for the, the fact that you had coronavirus in influenza-like illness seven years ago and now you have an antibody to that? Yeah, I kid you not. She doesn't mention DNA or RNA at all when talking about the PCR test. Are they, are, are they specifically looking for the SARS-CoV-2 antibody? Has it been around long enough for anybody to do that? The SARS-CoV-2 antibody? There is no the SARS-CoV-2 antibody. 
Wow. Wow. Okay, so antibodies are proteins. They are proteins that our immune system makes in response to foreign material. Proteins are very different from DNA and RNA. And remember, DNA and RNA are the things that PCR detects. PCR has nothing to do with antibodies. I mean, this is basic stuff. Stuff you can learn as an undergraduate in college or just through 10 seconds of Googling. How many hours of research did she say she's done again? 40,000 hours, four zero, 40,000 hours worth of research. Well, <clears throat> what they're actually doing is that they're injecting raw RNA. So there are RNA viruses, like measles is an RNA virus, polio is an RNA virus, for which we have vaccines. But those are grown in cultures, and the entire whole virus is injected, you know, attenuated, weakened, and put into the vaccine that gets injected. <clears throat> this, they're talking about just taking a snip of the RNA, which then goes into your body, and then your body's reverse transcriptase enzyme starts to replicate and make more and more and more of that virus, so you become your own vaccine factory internally. Ugh, no, that's not how it works at all. The RNA that gets injected into you from the vaccine doesn't get replicated. Humans do have reverse transcriptase in their system, but it's expressed at such low levels that it's hard to even detect it in activity assays. There's no way it's going to target the viral mRNA in the vaccine over all of your own mRNA, which is much more abundant, and start amplifying it. No, instead, the mRNA in the COVID vaccine gets degraded after a few hours. The mRNA in the vaccine only codes for one viral protein. It does not code for the whole virus. You are not becoming a virus factory. So if she doesn't understand PCR, she doesn't understand mRNA vaccines, but she thinks that she's done enough research to make a judgment call on mRNA vaccines, and that's what she does next. Well, they tried it, and the problem was, was this, this RNA vaccine was injecting it into animals, and they did too, and then they reintroduced, like, like exposed the animals to the, to the virus, to the coronavirus, and the animals died. Yeah, I've seen plenty of COVID deniers say this exact same thing. But unfortunately, Sherry Tenpenny must have missed these studies in her 40,000 hours of research. All of these studies show that mRNA vaccines have been used successfully in animals without the animals dying and the animals actually produced a good immune response to what they were vaccinated against. Sherry Tempenny must have missed this in her, how many hours of research again? 40,000 hours, four zero, 40,000 hours worth of research. Ooh, that's a lot of time wasted. This is economic warfare. This is going after Trump, doing anything they can to crash the economy. Okay, I think we're done here. I think we've seen all we needed to see. Sherry Tenpenny is clueless. She has absolutely no idea how any of this works. And if she does, then she's blatantly lying. Sherry Tenpenny is one of the most wrong COVID deniers that I've ever covered. Usually they have at least some understanding of what they're talking about, and they just twist truth or misinterpret information, but she had no clue. And yet COVID deniers and anti-vaxxers continue to prop her up as one of their best experts who is exposing the lies and spreading truth. Well, Sherry Tenpenny will be making many more appearances on this channel, but for now, I think we've seen all we needed to see. It's very clear that Sherry Tenpenny is clueless. And all of the studies and all of the information that I reference in this video are linked in the description below so that you can see that for yourself. That's going to do it for this week. I do hope you've enjoyed it and feel free to share this with any Sherry Tenpenny supporter that you encounter on the internet or in your life. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.